Okay, so here's our solar system. If you remember, we've got the, the small rocky things close in, uh, and then the big, still, these dots are still much too big compared to scale, um, Jupiter, Saturn, and the ice giants further out. Yep. And this theory about having the much more abundant ice blocks can help explain why you get this pattern. Okay. Because the idea is that the snow line, at least today, is roughly where the asteroid belt is. So everything on the other side of the asteroid belt has the chance of making this ice. That's right. So, and we remember that the elements that form ice, like carbon combining with hydrogen, oxygen forming with hydrogen, are much more common than the elements that form rock, like magnesium and silicon yep. with oxygen. So the idea would be that in the inner solar system, you'd have formed lots of rocky rocks. In the outer system, you'd formed ice blocks, and a lot more of them. So that means the plants in the other solar system would start growing faster because there's more That's stuff right. to form them and they'd end up bigger. And this is kind of what we see, right? That's right. So the planets outside the asteroid belt are bigger than those inside. Probably the, the whole, whole protoplanetary disk faded the way as you went further out, which is why Neptune is smaller than Jupiter. Yeah, okay. So you expect the, the first planet outside the slow line, it's where the protoplanetary disk was densest, yep. but also you're allowed to form the ice lumps that got bigger. So it's kind of that right balance between being able to form some bigger stuff, but also having the most material. And then as you slowly fade away, you just run out of stuff. And all these grains were still forming inside the spinning disk of gas. And so what happened most likely is that Jupiter and Saturn got sufficiently big that they could start pulling in the hydrogen and trapping oh, it. Oh, okay. Now Uranus, Neptune, and the other lumps never got that big enough. Uranus, Neptune probably aren't too far away. So probably in the middle of Jupiter and Saturn is a Uranus or a Neptune. But it just got just a little bit bigger than Uranus and Neptune are and now. And so it started to pile on that extra gas. And there was so much gas that the size then blew out and it became really big and mostly made of hydrogen and helium, as well, we see today. Well, you said in the beginning when we were, we were just looking at some of the planets that this is kind of the thought that maybe there is something on the inside of Jupiter because of this exact idea. Yeah, this is one of two theories. So one theory says that Jupiter formed by having originally a, like a, a lump of ice like Uranus and Neptune in the middle, but it just got that little bit bigger, which meant its gravity could attract the hydrogen and helium. The other theory is actually got a giant whirlpool of hydrogen and helium and it just collapsed from that. Okay. But I think the core theory is now the one that most people believe. So probably in the middle of this is something like that, a lump of ice and a bit of rock in it. Okay. But it uh, just got a bit bigger than this and that was enough to suck in large amounts of hydrogen and helium. But because there is ice and it's a lot easier to get a lot more ice and then these got sufficiently big enough that we got the gas, this explains why these are much, much, much bigger than the four yeah. small rocky things. So it's like once you get over that threshold that you can trap hydrogen and helium, then the size runs away. Okay. Which is why there's such a big gas between, a gap between Jupiter and Saturn and everything else. And this is why, again, in the beginning, you actually classified these two as different ice giants versus the gas giants. That's right. And then everything else, in the outer solar system, you're forming things mostly out of ice. Yep. And indeed, uh, the density of Uranus and Neptune seems to be consistent with not just water ice, but also methane and um, other ices. But then in the inner solar system, there's no ice. So things have to form very slowly. You have to rely on these much rarer lumps of rocky stuff okay. that makes it denser, but makes it take a lot longer. So that's why you, out of solar system, you get... The things like Uranus. Yep. Um, hydrogen and helium being much more common. That's why Jupiter and Saturn get so large. Which has, so they started off, started off like this, but swallowed much more stuff to become like this. Mm -hmm. um, but then you're left with the other stuff to form small rocky things like this and like this. So this kind of explains a lot. It explains why you get the big gassy things where you do, why there's such a big difference between Jupiter and Saturn and everything else. That's right. Why the four inner planets are all kind of the same and very different from the four outer planets. So it seems like a pretty good theory. So it seems like a pretty good theory that kind of explains surprisingly a lot of complicated stuff. Ages, composition, sizes, location, orbits. There's actually a lot of evidence here that has come up with this theory and actually been proven to be now, right. Now there are a lot of problems in this theory which we'll come to. I mean, one problem is when we look at other solar systems beyond our own, which do yes. the exoplanet course, you often find big gas planets in, closer in than Mercury is in our solar system. That does we, seem like a problem. But most likely they moved there. They actually formed uh, further out. And we, as we'll talk about later, it seems that planets can actually move around at some time. Okay. Um, another problem is where do we have the oceans on Earth? Yeah, you, 
We don't have a lot of water. We have a lot water of rock. Water should be able to survive stuff. in this yes. It should be just purely rock. And the other planets are mostly purely rock, but somehow you need to have got some water in. And it could be that water rich asteroids were scattered in from further out and delivered the water to us at some later stage. And this is one of the, th the leading theories, right? Water at rich asteroids collided on the Earth and places even like Mars. Yes. But nonetheless, you. Earth, we think of it as having lots of water, but still it's a very thin skin on a large lump of rock. Yep. It's not like Uranus and Neptune, which are mostly water with a small amount of rock mixed in with it. Um, so this is one possibility. Um, but to finish off our story of formation, what happens in the end is, so you've got this disk of gas and you form the planets, but then eventually the gas is going to go away. That's right, we didn't use all this gas, so where does no. it go? Some of it got sucked into Jupiter and Saturn, um, some of it ended up in the Sun, but some of it didn't. And what normally happens is a few stars in the cluster light up. And some of them are stars are going to be very massive ones, the O and B type That's right. stars. And the intense radiation from them will blow the gas away, not only from them, but actually blow gas away from all around them. And so quite possibly the radiation from some nearby O or B star hit our solar system and blew the gas away, so we're just left with the lumps of solid stuff. Ah, so something at some point shortly after it was forming kind of cleaned up our solar system in addition to the star working around its own place. Or it could be that the sun itself, when it got, um, it, it probably took a long time to form. You have a dense cloud of gas that slowly shrank until it started undergoing nuclear fusion. That can take a few million years, mm -hmm. as you talk about in the stars course. And maybe once it got going, a wind from the sun blew a lot of this other gas away. And this gas then just goes off into space? swirls around and probably ends up forming a new giant molecular cloud and some new planets at some and, later stage. And so we repeat the process. That's right. Uh, so that gives us the pattern then. We've had our giant molecular cloud. It shrunk because of conservation of angular momentum. It had to form a spinning disk. In the spinning disk, you've got ice in the outer parts and rocks in the inner bits. Um, some of the biggest ice blocks attracted a bit of gas to form Jupiter and Saturn. Then everything was blown away, just leaving these specks of rock orbiting around a nice big hydrogen helium-made sun.